Welcome back to a new installment of Lives on Wheels. Today, we tell you about a legend in the Gutsi household, the inventor of many motorbikes that have made history, including the legendary Gutsi Fov 8. Today, we tell the story of Giulio Cesare Carcano. Giulio Cesare Carcano was not only one of the most innovative engineers in the history of motorcycling, but also a man who traversed Moto Guzzi's history, steering the company toward extraordinary technical heights. Born in Milan in 1910, Carcano studied at the Polytechnic University of Milan, graduating in 1934. After completing his military service, he joined Moto Guzzi in 1936 as a young engineer, fresh out of school and with experience gained from military discipline. He was tasked with managing vehicles intended for the armed forces. The role proved particularly stimulating. On the one hand, adapting civilian models for military purposes offered the opportunity to deepen his understanding of the vehicles in production. On the other, collaborating with the Motorization Center allowed him to experiment with innovative ideas. However, Giulio Carcano's true passion lay in the world of racing. In 1938, he began working on racing motorcycles, focusing on models intended for the private market, such as the Condor and the Albatross. He often had opportunities to follow these motorcycles on the circuits or make technical modifications with the support of Carlo Bacchi, head of the engine test room. A significant event took place at the Circuito del Lario in 1939. The challenging course made it difficult to use particularly powerful motorcycles. Although Serafini's victory in 1938 on a supercharged four-cylinder Gilera seemed to contradict this notion. The same Serafini, participating in the 1939 edition with the same model, would have preferred to use a more manageable Otto Bologna if he hadn't been required by the Italian Championship regulations to compete with the same type of motorcycle in all races of the season. The early racing models from Moto Guzzi, including the Condor, on which Carcano worked extensively, highlight his vision and the importance of innovation in design in his work approach. The famous fork with Biscatini was initially developed for the Gambalunga model. The challenge of working with the shock absorber housed within the fork legs was overcome with the innovative solution of external shock absorbers which allowed for rapid replacement in just a few minutes and significantly improved the motorcycle's performance. This innovation, later applied to the 350 World Champion model and the eight-cylinder bike, showcased Carcano's ingenuity in solving practical design problems. Despite having significant creative freedom for competitions, his work in the production sector was not without obstacles. He recalled how Carlo Guzzi was sometimes reluctant to approve new ideas, but was always willing to adapt to necessities. His office, located in a modest space within the factory where he initially worked alone and later with the support of collaborators Cantoni and Todero, reflected the humility and pragmatism that characterized Guzzi's approach. After the war, Moto Guzzi's racing department diversified its designs, still under Carlo Guzzi's supervision. Among these, Antonio Micucci's twin-cylinder 250 stood out as he also oversaw its track performance, along with the development of the twin-cylinder and the Albatross, directly handled by Carlo Guzzi. Giulio Carcano, on the other hand, focused on independent projects such as the 250 twin-cam four-valve model. In 1950, Carcano aimed to elevate Moto Guzzi to a new level by persuading the company's management to construct a wind tunnel. Moto Guzzi, thus became the first motorcycle manufacturer in the world to possess such technology. The wind tunnel was utilized to optimize the aerodynamics of racing motorcycles, but its applications went further. Carcano himself used this tool to design a two-man bobsleigh that won the gold medal at the 1956 Winter Olympics in Cortina. Over time, Carlo Guzzi gradually stepped back from designing racing motorcycles entrusting full responsibility for the sector to Giulio Carcano. Carcano worked closely with Enrico Cantoni and Umberto Todero to continue the development of motorcycles. Carcano's design philosophy was based on three key principles, simplicity, lightness, and minimizing passive resistance. This vision found its ideal expression in a single-cylinder motorcycle characterized by agility, a torque-rich engine, aerodynamic fairings and narrow section tires. The results achieved in the 350cc World Championship confirmed the validity of this approach. In 1957, Keith Campbell, 
riding a 350 weighing less than 100 kilograms, secured the constructor's title, outperforming the four-cylinder Gilera motorcycles ridden by Liberati and McIntyre, thus reinforcing the success of this design philosophy. Carcano attempted to extend the single-cylinder concept to the 500cc class, but the challenge proved more demanding. Multi-cylinder motorcycles, such as those from Galera and later MV Agusta, designed by figures like Piero Raymore, became competitive not only on straights, but also on mixed circuits thanks to technical innovations like bell-shaped fairings. Once the initial difficulties were resolved, their superior power emerged as a decisive advantage. Faced with this context, Carcano decided to adopt a new strategy to remain competitive in the 500cc class. Rather than following the already established path of four-cylinder engines, a domain in which he had gained experience thanks to a prototype designed by the Roman engineer Carlo Giannini, Carcano chose a bold approach by developing an eight-cylinder engine to tackle the challenge innovatively. The decision was not without its difficulties. The V8 engine prototype was not born in a neutral environment, but emerged in an era dominated by tradition and fierce competition to surpass the limits set by rivals. Carcano, who had already accumulated experience with inline four-cylinder engines through his collaboration with Carlo Giannini, was determined to innovate. His eight-cylinder engine was a true revolution for the motorcycle world and was initially met with skepticism. However, Carcano refused to be discouraged. The V8 engine, compact and lightweight despite its complexity, boasted unparalleled technical sophistication. With a displacement of 500cc, it featured dual overhead camshafts, a radial valve arrangement and a power output exceeding 80 horsepower, an extraordinary achievement for its time. Mounted on a highly streamlined chassis, the bike promised unmatched speed on the straights. However, its complexity presented challenges in reliability and handling, and the learning curve for riders was steep. Despite these hurdles, the Moto Guzzi 5.8 became a symbol of technological audacity, forever cementing Carcano's reputation as a pioneer. In 1956, the V8 began to reach a level of stability that allowed Moto Guzzi to compete seriously. However, 1957 proved to be a year fraught with challenges. Despite the great promise of the project, rider accidents such as those of Lomas and Colnago at Imola and Dale in the Netherlands damaged team morale and the competitiveness of the endeavor. The V8's only victories came with Colnago at Syracuse in the first round of the Italian Championship and with Dale at Imola in the Shell Gold Cup. Nevertheless, despite the engine's potential, 1957 was a difficult year. During the final championship race in Modena, Kakano received the devastating news that Moto Guzzi, following Gilera's lead, had decided to withdraw from racing. The VI-8 project never reached its full potential, and the decision marked the end of the company's competitive career. Though Carcano continued as Moto Guzzi's technical director, he entered a period of disillusionment, overshadowed by the abrupt end of his racing ambitions. The withdrawal from competitions deeply affected Giulio Carcano, who had spent over two decades dedicated to designing racing motorcycles. Although he retained his role as technical director, leaving the racing world profoundly altered the trajectory of his career. Carcano would later recall the racing years with bittersweet nostalgia, especially the long journeys to competitions such as the Tourist Trophy on the Isle of Man. In interviews during his later years, he vividly recounted the week-long odysseys involving truck transport, ferries and numerous stops across Europe, all to arrive on time for the race. Despite the challenges, the Guzzi team faced these logistical trials with determination. One notable experiment during this era was the development of a 350cc eight-cylinder engine, which demonstrated great potential by producing over 50 horsepower. However, it never found practical or commercial application, Carcano criticized Moto Guzzi's lack of structured organization during those years where the racing division was entirely dependent on resources from mass production. This dependency stifled the possibility of evolving into a dedicated racing team, a necessity for competing at higher levels as seen with Ferrari. The decision to abandon racing felt like a blow to Carcano, not only because of how abruptly it was communicated, without warning to engineers and technicians, but also due to the wasted potential of knowledge and innovations that could have been further developed. 
He believed Moto Guzzi should have reorganized and modernized to remain competitive. Carcano often described his work at Moto Guzzi as a mission rather than a job. I would have paid to work at Guzzi, he remarked, reflecting his immense dedication and passion for his craft. He nostalgically recalled the creative fervor and commitment that marked the development of the eight-cylinder engine, emphasizing the sense of unity and passion that prevailed before 1957. After that, enthusiasm waned and work turned into a less inspiring routine. In the subsequent years, coinciding with a downturn in the motorcycle market, Moto Guzzi began diversifying its production and exploring new areas. Carcano focused on designing an air-cooled V-twin engine, initially conceived as a potential replacement for the Fiat 500 engine in a sporty version of the popular car. Despite its technical excellence, the project was not adopted by Fiat. However, the engine found use in a special all-wheel drive military vehicle, the 3 by 3 inches. The origins of the V90 engine stemmed from a unique request. The Italian Presidential Guard, Corazzieri, sought a motorcycle that matched their imposing stature and ceremonial function. A colonel told me their horses came from Normandy because they needed animals proportionate to riders two meters tall. The motorcycle had to have the same prestige as the Norman horse, Carcano recounted. This request laid the groundwork for the iconic Moto Guzzi V-twin engines, which became a hallmark of the company in subsequent decades, embodying a blend of technical innovation, functionality and prestige. For Carcano, this represented a bridge between his passion for high-performance engineering and the practical demands of a rapidly evolving industry. Thus was born the V9704cc engine project, which became the foundation for subsequent developments. This engine design gained popularity among military and police forces worldwide, but as Carcano himself emphasized, it was not intended for racing. The shaft drive causes torque reactions that are detrimental to a racing motorcycle, but perfect for touring and law enforcement duties. From this foundation emerged the celebrated V7, a motorcycle that would become one of Moto Guzzi's most iconic models. Carcano acknowledged the fundamental role played by the people of Mandelo in Moto Guzzi's success. Carlo Guzzi's early collaborators were highly skilled and humble mechanics who, despite their modest backgrounds, were exceptional in their work. One example Carcano fondly remembered was Agostini, nicknamed Il Moretto, renowned for his skill in crafting the camshafts for racing motorcycles. This level of artisanal quality was a hallmark of Guzzi's production. Carcano expressed admiration for Dr. Enrico Parodi, whom he described as too kind to be an industrialist. He portrayed Parody as a generous figure who cared for his employees during tough times, but was perhaps ill-suited to managing the crises of the 1960s. The company suffered from internal intrigues and tensions, a situation Carcano recalled with bitterness. After the company changed ownership in 1966, Giulio Carcano left Moto Guzzi to embark on a new professional journey, opening a technical studio dedicated to designing racing sailboats, one of his great passions. In his studio, Carcano applied the same innovative design skills he had honed in motorcycling. Among his achievements were Villanella, which won the two-ton cup, and Volpina, which earned him third place at the World Championships in Helsinki in 1961. Carcano's racing boats became famous for their characteristic V-shaped bow, a detail reminiscent of the shape of the V8 engine he had designed for Moto Guzzi. Additionally, Carcano applied his genius to rowing, introducing a novel arrangement of the oar locks in the Coxless Four, a technique that enabled the Canottieri Moto Guzzi rowing team to win numerous international titles. Carcano continued to pursue his passion for boats and sailing into the 1980s, living in Mandello del Lario, the heart of the region that had shaped his career. Here, surrounded by his beloved cats, who ruled his home unchallenged and the waters of the lake, he spent his time between designing and reminiscing in an atmosphere of deep tranquility. Mandelo del Lario was both his sanctuary and the cradle of his passion. From childhood, he spent holidays in the family home there, forging a profound bond with the community. He even turned down an offer from Count Augusta, who had promised him carte blanche to work on motorcycles, helicopters and airplanes just to stay in the village. I couldn't bring myself to leave Mandelo, he recounted. Carcano was a quiet yet brilliant engineer who resisted the conventions of his time. His freedom was sacred, 
and he disliked being directed by anyone. His extraordinary capacity for innovation left an indelible mark on both motorcycling and sailing. While his career was marked by remarkable successes, it was also shadowed by disappointments, such as the end of his competitive work with Moto Guzzi. Despite this, his name is forever linked to two of the most extraordinary technical fields, motorcycling and sailing, and especially to Mandello Dell'Ario. Giulio Cesare Carcano, with his ability to think outside the box, made a fundamental contribution to Moto Guzzi and the motorcycling industry. His death at the age of 95 marked the close of an extraordinary life, but the legacy he left behind lives on in Moto Guzzi motorcycles and the racing boats that bear his signature. As he once said, his vision was always clear. If he couldn't do something his way, he wouldn't do it at all.